every woman has their, that competitive advantage, the core competency that they have to find within themselves. I'm sure they know they have and lean on that. I'm, I'm in the industry where I see a lot of families fall apart. There are a few things that you can do physically as well as emotionally to um, try to keep that connection. And I particularly see that with a lot of mother-in-laws. Oh, wow. Yeah, and and new um, new daughter-in-laws, brides, and it's, 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 it's different. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me on my fifth episode with Sona Manukian. Sona is in the beauty industry. We talked a lot about beauty, but we also talked a lot about business. She's so smart and gave such wonderful knowledge about the business world, how to start your business, how to manage. I asked her very interesting questions like, how do you handle unhappy clients? Her answers were so wonderful. Um, we talked a lot about consulting. She even asked me questions about parenting. I asked her about her sisters, and it was just an authentic conversation back and forth about two women. And one of the most important things I think that I can dwell into with my ho uh, guests is conservatorship. We talked a lot about her conservative side, and it was really interesting to see what she had to say and how she was raised. So stay tuned. Sonal Jan, thank you so much for joining me today. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. I'm so excited. First of all, <laughs> I think too. we're both just so like nervous, but it's our first time seeing each other. It's the first time that we're in a room where we actually get to have a conversation together. So you guys, we are, we're, we're, we're feeling a little jittery, but at the same time, we're like admiring each other. Absolutely. I'm like obsessed. I, <laughs> I am too. Thank you so much. I can't stop looking at you. <laughs> well, I'm staring. <laughs> you're so beautiful, Sona. I think you have made such a, oh my God, what's the word? Like such a powerful impact on women and it's not new you've been in the skincare world you've been cooking you've been working out just I think you represent self-care on another level and I want to know like how did you Matt where did this all start how did you start thank you so much first of all your studio is really beautiful your really? office is very like beautiful that. it's so welcoming you're so beautiful thank you so much for having me and thank you so much for such an introduction um you know it's basically it's just my passion my pleasure and i just wanted to share that with the world with women especially armenian women i too just like you have a passion of lifting and uplifting and inspiring other women. I grew up in such a, a family. We are we're six sisters. Oh my God. I'm the oldest. So no, that's a blessing. <laughs> that is a blessing. Are I'm you good blessed. with your sisters? Oh like my all goodness. of them? We are literally are so close with each other. We're like um, six musketeers, if you really? want to go. Absolutely. What do you think your mom did? As far like your parents, what did they do different that you guys are so good with each other? That's very rare. Really? <laughs> I swear to you, you don't hear that. It's it's not even about the Armenian culture. Just in general, I think siblings are falling apart nowadays. I mean, I'm I'm in the industry where I see a lot of families fall apart. Wow. And I do see that. So what do you how is your style any different? I believe it's the responsibility. So we've had my mom raise that, us in a way that we've each one of us had a responsibility to take care of, of the other one. Like for ex I had a responsibility to always take care of my little sisters mm -hmm. and the other one had the responsibility to t take care of the uh, other, sister. other sisters. So, so basically it we we would just cook for each other since we were little oh or clean for each other or help with schools and just just regular chores to do for each other. And mm -hmm. that's how we grew up to be. And after even we're married, we have our families. We always check on each other to see if there's anything we can do. We always share whatever we have. It is it. it, it you know, it could be financially, mentally, emotionally. We are always there for each other. Oh, my God. I don't have any sisters. 
I have a brother, but I feel like there is just always something missing. And I think a lot of women can relate because not a lot of us have sisters. So I always wonder, I'm like, how is the life of women that have just multiple sisters any different than a woman that doesn't have any sisters? And I think I found my answer. <laughs> This is just my perspective. You tell me if I'm if I'm in the right place or if maybe I'm wrong, but sisters give you a different type of support. Absolutely. That is so true. They um I feel like we shared the, so much with each other growing up. We know of each other so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're six sisters, so my the the age difference between me and my youngest two twin sisters is um, twelve years. So wow. yeah, we would th- you would think we would not have that much in common, but we do because we again we I grew up taking care of them when they were babies, and it, times were different back then. You know now I know that many advice uh, many may advise not to, um, you know, have your kids take, you know, do that mothering, I don't know, um, taking care of things about uh, for your siblings. Mm-hmm. But back then it was different. You know, my mom gave us a lot of responsibilities mm-hmm. to do around the house and with our sisters. And that support, love, and um, almost caring for each other in that level came to be our reality even until now. I love that is so beautiful. What I'm noticing, I don't know if you notice the same, but I think we're both like very conservative. Yes. That's why we have such a strong connection. We're very like biblical. We believe in a lot of values and morals. And like you and I share a lot about what's happening in the world right now. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that like I absolutely respect about you. But um Family values are changing so much. Yes. When you say your mother gave you a lot of responsibilities, now do you know what a lot of um, a lot of times what they teach in therapy schools about the family system oh, wow. that children should not have that many responsibilities. Yeah. Like you should not be the parent in the relationship. You should be the child, and the parent should be the the the, chi- the parent. Mm-hmm. But I wonder, like, what what do you feel like? Is there is there such boundary? Like, should there be a boundary there? Or it's okay to give children like that much responsibility that you had growing up? Well, first of all, I also w- was taken care of and treated as a child. In my mom and my father, both, they did such an amazing job. My dad gave, you know, I remember growing up, I have been in every theater, every um concerts. We grew up in Yerevan, you know, in such Mm -hmm. a wonderful cultural city. Mm -hmm. We were in every, again, like concerts and theaters and uh, every cultural event, museums and everywhere. You know, we had almost like a schedule for a week. We would go every weekend. There was an event that we would all go participate. It's not like I was staying home and taking care of kids while my parents were out there and having fun. Oh, no. Yes. My mom and we would have to finish, you know, do our chores and our classes and take care of each other in a way that um, is sometimes even on you know, my mom didn't have to ask us, you know, it was in that level of love and responsibility. I never felt like it was too much on me or I did mm, my mom's job in a way. No, not at all. That There was a good balance. Absolutely. Did you take the same skills from your mom to parent your children the same way? Or do you think like, you were a different type of mom to your mm. boys? Uh, no, abs- I did actually. It was, it's so important for me that my boys are very close to each other. It's my husband's and my um, purpose in life because we know we're not going to be in their lives forever. But it's we always tell them that you are our creations. And I wish that times were different when my, um, you know, I was starting the family and I w- would have definitely more kids. I grew up in a bigger family and that's something I always miss you know, I don't like a quiet house, but now my house is becoming more and more quiet Yeah, <laughs> as my kids get older, older and they have their own life. But um, how does that feel? 
It feels... Um, it's called an empty nest, right? Uh, yeah, I don't like that word. I don't <laughs> like it either. I get very emotional when yeah, I think I about like, it. I don't think it's a good good um, t- like term to even describe at all. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's so sad. It, can I just say it's more American than it anything is. else? Because my yes. nest is never going to be empty. <laughs> and it's, you know, <laughs> in that way, I we've that. we have a few things. For example, both of our boys... W- do and will always have their rooms in our house of course just set the way they you know left it to go elsewhere and we also do everything to live uh, in the same city or better yet on the same street Mm -hmm. it's also something that we uh, are blessed to be able to do there are a few things that you can do physically as well as emotionally to um try to keep that connection. My mom, is my mom's dream actually. Uh, now all of us live in different states in the US. One sister lives in Armenia and then five of us are, uh, okay, so uh, three, uh, four, um, three sisters live in LA. I live in Colorado and the other sister lives in Miami. But we always try to get together every time there is, um, we can. But it's my mom's dream that all of us live together. But now I'm, I'm almost, you know, trying to do that with my family. Your parents are here. Yes. So today you guys have big plans. Yes. Are you excited? Very much. We're, yeah, it's That's my... a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. In a few days, my, my father is turning 70 and where everyone came with our families, with our kids, with our husbands to celebrate that wonderful event. I'm so happy. Thank I'm you. happy to hear that because not not that I don't hear it often or I don't see it. It's just my work is on the other side. It's on the side where people experience sadnesses, traumas. So when I say that I don't hear it often, I don't want people to think like I'm a negative person and I don't it's just that I see a lot of sadnesses in the world and and I'm in it. Wow. So when I hear that people are genuinely happy and they have successful families, they have wonderful children, I get happy because when you see the other side, the only thing you can do is every day just be grateful. Be grateful wow. and be happy for people. I genuinely am happy for people. Do, do you, and I, I did, I, I wanted to ask you, do you see that mostly in Armenian or different cultures as well? those disconnection almost I think that um it's it's 50 50 okay I think that in our culture we we do a really good job with keeping closeness mm-hmm. um but I feel like we're not very respectful of boundaries yet okay um and I particularly see that with a lot of mother-in-laws oh wow yeah and and new um new daughter-in-laws, brides, and it's 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 different. But I think that overall, like we Armenians do a very good job keeping close. And actually, there was this Indian actress, I forgot her name, Ashwai Rai, I think. Yeah. She was doing a show at De- David Letterman, I think he was. And, and one of the things that she said was, you know, Indians don't have to make appointments <laughs> with the, their parents to visit. To have dinner. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I'll never forget that statement. I'm like, she makes perfect sense. So our culture does a really good job with that. Yeah. Um, but I wish that other cultures can also adapt that behavior mm-hmm. because having your children move out at 16, 17 years old and they don't have fully their life together, they don't even understand the concept of purpose is such, oh, I yes. think that it's not a good idea whatsoever. That's so true. Because they're still developing They don't know anything about who they are, who they want to be. It's the time for them to be confused. It's identity versus role confusion. Absolutely. And I think a part of it is like when you're 18, you have to go out and then there is that um, societal pressure and Mm -hmm. peer pressure that you have to do that. I think that was introduced by the... Uh, I want to say government, but to run the economy mm-hmm. in the way that they, they, they want to run the economy. Absolutely. It, have it has, yes, it has better, more of a financial, I mean, they move out, they have to rent a house, you have yes. to pay this, you have to, you know, the, all the economy moving thing. Yes. But um, 18 is way too young. Absolutely. They're still babies. Truly. They're still babies. But then you look at that and then, I mean, people get married at 18 at our culture. How old were you when you got married? I, I was 18. <laughs> my, my husband was uh, uh, 23. Yeah. So, but our situation was, 
oh, just a maybe very common Armenian situation. So we were in Armenia. We both got into school in uh -huh. in the U.S. in Colorado. It was 90, 1998. Wait, so you went to school here? Yes. And then oh we God. had to, like, I mean, he had to come for his Ph.D., And basically, we were together, we were dating, we were in love. So we made a decision to get married <laughs> and then come so because my, my parents would not let me go with him to the U.S. without being married, you know? Yeah. Do you like Colorado? Um, Do you like living there? I used to love it a lot, but Colorado is becoming more and more liberal. Is it? And it shows almost everywhere it never used to be that way it was a more um uh conservative state especially bolder mm -hmm. now we see a lot of liberal values coming in and i mean my obviously my kids are adults i don't worry in that sense that much but um that boulder used to be a wonderful city to raise kids in safe and very um conservative which i like to <laughs> yes so but now mm -mm, more and more it started in early 2000s where many people from california you know the tech industry started migrating to colorado and building a lot of you know obviously offices and things like that and then they also brought the culture mm -hmm. and now we see californians that. <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> you guys <California>. are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I mean it's 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 true. That's what you know. We look at you as this. I look at you because I, you're just amazing. But do you do you feel like? And this is something I actually I genuinely wanted to bring up and talk to you about. A lot of the influencer world, we we tend to come off as such ideal individuals we have our homes clean to the top we look <laughs> fabulous to the i mean everything is just always so set what advice would you give the women that has that have this comparison like oh my god i look at sona and i'm sure you get messages <laughs> like that it's not yeah. it's not it's not strange yeah. uh, what i'm talking about is not going to be strange yes but Do you, what advice would you give women that are like, oh my God, like she always has her stuff together. Oh, I have two kids. My house is a mess. Oh my God, look at her. She has this amazing skincare line. She's amazing cook. Like that, that comparison makes women sick. Yes. You know, I've heard this um, line. Someone said, it takes a lot of hard work to make something look easy. <laughs> And I think there is so much truth in that. I love that. Yeah. It really takes a lot of hard work to make things look easy. It does. Um, every You know that. I because do. you are also a content creator. Let's just take that example. Yeah. As a content creator, you know the work it takes. Just simply, you know, doing your hair, doing your makeup, doing, yeah. you know, getting yourself mentally together to start the content mm -hmm. and filming, editing, mm -hmm. and writing. And... All of that is a full-time job. With me, I also cook. I have to shop yeah. and prepare you to have do your the family. everything. Yes, and uh, to be honest, when I started my uh, my page, it was a lot harder because I didn't have the help I have now. But it took me years, and it took a lot of hard work to get where I am. In terms of comparison, it's. Um, it could be motivating, inspiring, but it could also be uh, hurting. So it's very important to be able to find that balance where to compare yourself and where to be happy about what you have and work harder. That's very important. For me, I always, even in business, right? When I talk to my team, we always talk about how we are going to focus on our customers instead of on our competition. Every time businesses focus on their competition, they lose the power that they have, the which is their yes, which is their core competency, their True. competitive advantages. 
every woman has their that competitive advantage, the core competency that they have to find within themselves. I'm sure they know they have and lean on that and make that their strength instead of leave letting the core competency, your competitive advantage, your values, your who you are, that one identity type, leaving that and not leaning on that and trying to compare and focusing on outside on someone else or on your competition, if you want to call it, because there are always going to be some people, other women who are going to do things better. Or just better, 100%. Yes, yes. But um, it's the reality. As soon as you focus that power within yourself, the growth is powerful. You can feel the um, reward. It's ma- It's magical, actually. If you can, if you can practice that ability. How you know? did you come to that conclusion? Did you struggle before getting there? Um, to be honest, no. <laughs> so how did it you? It actually up- came from my mom. <laughs> My mom. Mothers, of course. It's the mothers. mm, My mom has always gave us tasks and responsibilities and expected uh, results. In a way, first of all, we grew up reading a lot. I read a lot of books. I think that women or any person should read books. um, And from very young age. I I think reading gives you... The kind of confidence, I don't know how to explain, You're that you cannot it, right? get it from somewhere else. You know, and I believe in reading classics, to be honest with you. I know mm-hmm. many people read right now, but I almost feel like those comic books or whatever, those are not really what you want to read. That's not reading. Yes. That's not reading. I agree. I'm so happy that you understand what I, do. I mean. But yeah. I do. I believe in big books. I believe yeah. in... I mean, I work with a lot of teenagers and each of them are assigned to a book. And one of the books that really changed my life was The Habit. Oh, my goodness. Have you read that book? I haven't, but I... Sona. I've... Yes. That book is life-changing. I have actually helped people quit smoking. I've heard so So many addictions because of habit reversals. And that book is phenomenal. So yes, I'm going to say it. Comic books are not books. No. Your children should be reading (laughs) like actual books, whether it's historical books, whether it's it's art. art, Absolutely. It's it's like writers from... You know, absolutely 17th century, 18. Now, you want that connection, you want that realization of how we were, where we are, and it gives you that strength in it. I agree. And my mom always, and my father too, it, reading books in our family was, you know, that was just the no, without question. I, I could never say I have too many homeworks, I cannot read. It doesn't matter. No matter how how much homework you have, have you read? Mm-hmm. You know, the books that my father, my mom gave us, we had lists. Yes. You know, we started reading philosophers when we were in high school. Yes. Not many people read philosophers no. now. No. So I'm not saying everything is right, what was written, and everything should be taken as 100%. But, it's but it develops you in yes. a way that, you know, in your brain gives you this connection that you can really have that self-confidence. I agree with you 100%. I mean, my eldest, Noy, he reads about five to 10 pages a day. And I'm sorry, that's how much I could get him to read right now because of everything going around with the tech world. How old is he? He's 10. Oh, so it's kind of hard, but he the kid's doing it. Yeah. And you have to be very disciplined. You have to be routine oriented. You have to be strict. Oh, yes. Routine is my Absolutely, life. Absolutely, <laughs> right? I think that, Sona, a lot of people think that when you get to the point in your life when you're just so successful and you have things going for you, people think that it's easy. I don't think women understand the amount of mental health that goes into being Sona Manukyan. 
<laughs> I genuinely don't think because I'm looking at it from a different perspective. I'm I'm looking at it from a psychological perspective. I see you. I your your page is just so clean and phenomenal. Everything about you as I said before. But I don't think women understand the amount of work you've done on yourself. I think people just think you're born with it like Maybelline, but it's not like no. that. So have you struggled in your life? Very much. I think people would love to kind of see that side. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, and I talk about it on my page, just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. you, I came to this country with my newly married husband. I was 18. He was 23. We, may, many people may think it's a cliche, but I promise you it's the very truth. We came to this country with $90. Oh my goodness. With $90. We had no money from, we would never take money from our parents. Our parents didn't have money. It was 1998, yeah. the worst years uh, for, for Armenia, for everyone else. We came to this country and not only we had to survive for ourselves, but we, our main focus and purpose was to find a job, a few jobs, as many jobs as we can to make money to send home. So I think that's the struggle that many of our generation Correct. went the through. the Soviet times. The, you know, because it was over and all mm -hmm. the mutu came. It was a, it was a, not only a mental disaster for our parents, because my father is a doctor, my mom is a teacher. They always made good living and for us, for our families, but Things came and everything they knew for themselves to be right and to be their reality was was destroyed in in a day almost. I like agree, this yeah. country that they leaned on, they did their savings, they did everything. It does not exist anymore. Now they have to find from a start from zero. Oh, yeah. There is no electricity. There is no water. There is there is nothing, and they have to raise kids and everything. I was their oldest. I came to our America with God's grace. And this country has give, given me everything I have, mm -hmm. the opportunity for everything. I took every single opportunity that was given to me. And when I say every single, I, I truly mean that. I worked at, at the Dairy Queen. I made ice cream. I worked, no. yes, I worked in, I don't know if you know, but there was JC Penney's. Yes. That was my first job. It I was still clean. exists. Yes, yes. I was oh cleaning um, the dressing rooms. I wasn't speaking that much. You know, I, I, I knew English because I was, I graduated from an English school in Armenia, mm -hmm. but that's not the same English. Correct. When you come here, it's not the same English at all. Someone told me I appreciate it. I, as a thank you, I didn't understand what he was it's saying. It's different. You know. It's different. So I worked two shifts. I was opening Eddie Bauer and then until from six to three. After at four, I was going to Dairy Queen. So no, Eddie and, Bauer. Yes. I worked at Eddie Bauer. I worked I everywhere. I love that yes. store. Such elegant things. It was like very so, campy. Yep. But it was uh, so nice. Yeah. And I being student full-time you and your husband we had to make it every penny we earned we paid all the bills here and sent everything else to armenia for our parents our sisters yes. our uh, family and uh, that was a struggle now when i look back that that period of a um, few years but um all of those things made me who i am made me so much tougher and I'm so much grateful for all that those experiences right now that I look back obviously when I back then you were like why couldn't my life be easier and everything else but um I didn't even have time to think that way mm -hmm. I didn't even have time to blame or to complain you know it was you were the on survival mode yes you to work surviving. and go to school and I knew I had to do really well at school if I wanted to have a be you know better life and better future because that my parents told me that nowadays me, m people might think you know there's so many self-made you know successful women and you know education might not be the you know I mean the formal education might might not be the core of success mm -hmm. but back then that's not how we were raised we would always 
you know, we would we believed that formal education is the, you know, stepping stone of mm -hmm. the successful path. <laughs> is education important for you? Yes. And it does not mean a diploma from a university. Wow. Whatsoever. I love that. Can you explain that? Because th you just said something that, see, great minds think alike. Because you can have 10, 15 diplomas up there. But if this wisdom and this other switch is not working, then that all goes to waste. W what's your... And Eddie, do you see t in today's world that many evil is being done by people who Educated. have the highest educations? Yes possible yes so that's just yes shows you um and we see wonderful people who have no formal education never graduated from anything mm -hmm. but they make such a change in the world they and they're do. such an educated people and you have a great pleasure just knowing them um no self-education is very important and it yes. comes from i think your parents yeah but if, your roots but even if that period was lost for you in somehow you can always self-educate and it starts within probably i mean you would know better but i think from getting to know yourself mm -hmm. again for me it's reading books talking to people who are more successful than you are and always having open mindset to learn and that's um, the issue yes that's even if you issue. don't agree with things but you need to be open to learn that is the biggest issue that i see with women they're not very open they're judgmental they criticize they complain they sit in a victim chair Oh, yeah. And it's always, why not? Why not? Why not? How come? How come? Why not me? And yeah, absolutely. It starts from meeting parts of yourself that you don't like. Yes. You got to look yourself in the mirror and say, I don't like my personality because some women do have very nasty personalities. <laughs> they do. I'm being honest. This is this is real. And it's OK. And sometimes I have to tell them, you don't have a very good personality wow. and you don't have friends because this and this part of you needs work. That is your job as a consultant. That's your job as a coach, as a doctor, whatever you want to call yourself. You have this ethical obligation to tell people truth so that they're more self-aware. Oh, wow. But I can tell you the truth. Your part is to accept. And that's the piece when you're saying people have to be more open. A lot of people are not open to accepting parts of themselves that they don't like. They're yeah. not very self-aware and conscious of it. And they go on for the rest of their lives thinking, Sona has everything and I don't. So I'm going to sit down. I'm going to write ugly things to her. <laughs> I'm going to hate on her. I'm going to be jealous. And it's just sad. And these types of people raise children. So... I don't know. I think my advice is just, as you said, be more self-aware and be open. It's very hard. Isn't it very hard to be self-aware? You are always aware of others, right? More than... It's very hard. So... Until somebody tells you to and teaches you, guides you. Yeah. Maybe a book will teach you that. And yeah, absolutely. You can always yeah. refer to a, like a specialist who knows, yeah. who's been trained yeah. to help you. It, yeah, that's important. In today's world there there is so much information and mm -hmm. you you can access to so many great things there is all all it takes is to have the will mm -hmm. and i also think that women are afraid a lot of people who don't want to change they they are afraid because change is hard and we resist change it's true for every aspect of your life even in business world Every time yes. a CEO decides to make a decision, all the other people, all the other departments start resisting change because they True. do not want to let go of the status quo because it's they they feel so much comfortable with their comf in the zone with right. in within with which they operate daily that the change is almost like a threat to their status status quo. Every right. time, you know, you you. But as soon as one time, I think you practice that, uh, taking that risk to change, it almost becomes addictive. Then you want to change more. Correct. So, Because you see results and you see the people around you change. Absolutely. You might be in a really bad marriage, you know, and 
just by changing yourself, your whole dynamic changes, the marriage change, the children change. So change is a very important piece in a woman's life, I think. And again, starting that change comes from understanding that you need to change something. So if anyone is unhappy, anyone, anybody that feels sad, anybody that sits down and compares and is in the victim chair, I strongly, strongly recommend look at the parts of yourself that needs change. And just as you said, Sona, beautifully said, take that risk. It is a risk, but you're never going to know. I mean, who wants to sit in a victim chair and, and stay away from spotlight for the rest of their life? Yeah. It's so nasty to be there. Edith, I uh, remember how we met online. Mm -hmm. uh, it was during the war mm -hmm. that your page got attacked yes I believe. Hacked. hacked yes was by hacked. the yeah and um by the other party yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we started supporting each other's page mm -hmm. to you know keep it active so that we can sh we could share this so yes get your followers back yes. anybody i remember yes and i've been following you ever since and we both your, yeah. your page is so so, um, I want to say helpful at the same time, very inspiring, but at the same time, um, very soothing, I want to say. Yes. Yes. And I also wanted so to ask to you, I never knew this. I never got to ask you really. Yeah. How did you decide to start your Instagram journey to, you know, what, what? I love that. Honestly, I've never had a podcaster ask me questions. I'm sorry. I get, no, why are you sorry? I love that because it's a conversation. I'm so interested. No, I love that. Thank Maybe it's you. because we just met. I know. <laughs> and it's. I think it's beautiful when you meet somebody. It's The conversation has to flow from both parties. So, so thank you. I honestly, I think that ever since I was a little girl, I just always loved Sona talking to old people. Oh, my goodness. I just never, wow. ever since, and I I was born in Armenia, and I came to the States when I was 10. Okay. And all throughout my life in Armenia to second grade, I just got, I always got really irritated talking to children my age. Okay. I was a child myself. Um, I remember specifically, I would go sit down, and do you remember how like in front of every building there was a chair? Oh, yes. The bisetka? The bisetka. <laughs> I, there was like grandma sitting there, grandma Absolutely. sitting there with the little sunflower <laughs> seeds. And I would go and sit next to them and I would just talk to them. Oh. It just brought me so much meaning. And I understood from such a young age that talking is healing. Wow. Talking is healing. Sometimes people have a really hard time. When, when I'm in a session with someone for the first time, Sona, Sometimes when they're talking, they'll stop and they say, am I, am, do, I, do I make sense? I'm all over the place, right? And they are. And that's because these types of people have, people have never been heard in their life. So true. It's okay to feel things, but it's different to talk. Like when you talk, you figure out your life better. Oh my goodness. So I loved talking, hence being what I do. You know, I... I think talking is very healing. And from there on, I just got really inspired. And I, as I grew up, I fell more into psychology, received my education in psych. And I just, you know, one day, I remember I was on this uh, American lady. I forgot her name. I forgot her name, but she had like little um, art and it was like kids. And she wrote, this is how you know when a child has depression. It was like different faces. Oh. And I was like, this is so beautiful. Like, how come Ar Armenians don't do this? They don't. And then I started create my old page was all art. And it was all about how to detect, you know, what to do when you're sad, what to do when you're happy, da, 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 things like that. It was just like art formed. But that's how I got into it. And then I reached out to Araxia. I was like, Araxia, it's COVID. Let's do this talk about cyberbullying. And then they just took off from there. But honestly, it was just about talking. Like, I was always motivated. And I always got in trouble for talking, Sona. Really? <laughs> yes, I would imagine. <laughs> First of all, women always get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> always, <Is it? laughs> always. Ask my parents. I always got in trouble for talking. It was so sad. See, now, now you the, make now a the teachers. Haha, <laughs> 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 surprise, surprise. So, yeah. 
Yeah, teachers too. Yeah, if you went to school in yeah. Armenia for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, Armenia was different. I mean, at the time where I was going to school, beatings were okay. Oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah. 1994, 95, around yeah. that time. 92, 93. I mean, yeah. beatings, we would get severely, brutally beaten in classes. Yes. That was really uncomfortable. But uh, yeah, that <laughs> that that the education in Armenia was completely different. But anyway... That's how I got started and I just fell into it and I am absolutely I love it now because you see the result. Uh, you practice family? Mm -hmm. like, okay. Therapy. Yeah, a lot of like family, a lot of uh not kids because with kids it's so different. Mm -hmm. With kids you can't just sit down and talk to a child. Mm -hmm. Um it's a lot of play, so I have so much respect for the therapists that do child therapy. It's a lot of work. It's it, pretty intense. Both of my sisters, you know, young youngest, they are therapists. Really? Yeah. With children? Uh one is uh with children, the other one is family. Yeah. So it's such a noble job. Yeah. I just pay anytime I hear someone's a therapist, I'm like, I, I just have so much respect for you. Wow. And it is a, the, the, I don't want to say that word, but it is mentally, mm -hmm. um, in, um, I don't want to say draining. It is but draining. It, yeah. Yeah. It's draining. It's draining because you see a lot of people suffer mm -hmm. and you're a person and you don't want to see people suffer, but you see them suffer. And you know that there's, there's a good um, outcome from that suffering because I, I believe that suffering and struggling is needed in life. Mm -hmm. I don't think that um, every successful person is just successful because of all greatness and happiness. That's so true. I think that suffering is needed and suffering is needed because first of all, we need to be closer to God. Um, yes. You know, it, God does say that if I don't give you struggles, you'll stay away from me. And it's true. it is very powerful. That's very powerful. So it's needed in a lot of it's needed in a lot of ways in life, and you know. So, but absolutely, it's very draining. Sona, you you see a lot of things, and you're a mom yourself. You're a wife, um, so it, it does take a toll. But it's training. You train yourself to see good for people, and I pray. A lot for my clients. Oh my goodness, that's I so do. beautiful. I do. I I do pray for them, and they, I'm so proud of all of them. They're just so wonderful and successful, and everything in between. But yeah, it sometimes it gets it gets very tiring. Um, and then to be able to separate your work because it is it's your work, but also it's so. Um, Pers almost can be it sometimes is. personal that you might take it, you know, upon you up, upon you too much, and then take that home True. or to your kids or True. So you have to, you know. It's, I guess it takes years of training to be able to do but that. Can switch. I say something? I don't know. You can maybe you've talked to your sisters about this, but I think that a really good therapist does walk in the shoes of their client. I think that to be able to really help someone, the boundary is going to destroy that process. Yeah. So maybe, um, maybe I'm, I don't know, this is just my perspective. A lot of therapists will probably say, no, the boundaries are needed. But I don't think that, I think that you should be taking that home. Oh, your, wow. your client should be in here a lot of the times. Wow. And you just have to find the proper, maybe balance isn't the right word, but I'm just going to use it for the lack of better word. You have to find a good balance. So I do think about my clients when I'm washing the dishes. I do think about, oh, I should have said this or we should say this oh, next wow. time. We should do this. Now. How, you know, so it's it's a lot. They live in my head. Wow. And that's that's, that's what cool. makes a pretty noble person to me. I don't know. I, I don't believe that separation is helpful yeah for me for, for me yeah for me I, yeah I don't know every therapist is different sometimes they're like oh I'm fine you know yeah but me no I am I'm, I breathe everything in like I dissect everything of their life and they live in my head 
until they feel good and they're done. But oh, wow. That's yeah. so wonderful. I had a professor when I was in my practicum hours, Sona. Her name was Ina Lee. She's she's Russian. She, I love her. <laughs> um, she was my professor and then hired me to be a therapist at her private practice. She's like, You're, you'll never survive in private practice. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, why? And she's like, first of all, you treat way too fast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a business side. <laughs> but I and then and, and I look into it, I'm like, but I just don't think that I could ever not do that. I don't I don't know what it is. I don't know how other people work in their in their consulting firms, but I'm I just I believe that pick up pick up fast so people can move on and live with their lives. So that was really interesting. You know, you know, you might be surprised, but I'm thinking maybe this will serve you better. <laughs> The podcast and uh, now the you the healing fast people approach. faster, yeah. yeah, yeah. I believe in it because that's run. what my therapist did for yeah. me when yeah. I was in my struggles. Like I struggled a lot. I didn't, you know, when I was younger. I mean, when you're younger, you're not supposed to know who you are anyway. Yeah. It's normal to be confused. By the way, I, I want to make this clear that when parents experience uh, their teenagers or their something twenty year old child, and they're like, I don't know what I want to be. Mm -hmm. I'm confused, and they're at war with themselves. Congratulations. That's supposed to happen. Oh, wow. How That's so? very normal. Well, look at it this way. You're you're discovering yourself. How is a 20-year-old supposed to know who mm. they are and where they belong? 30-year-old. 30. <laughs> you know when they say the brain develops at 25? I don't think that's actually true. And there, when I was working at an eating disorder unit, there was one of the doctors there. I forgot his name, but he was a PhD and he did research, just nothing but research on eating disorders. And he said that the brain does not develop at 25. The brain oh. never fully develops. develops. Yeah. It and develops thank, and thank throughout. God. I and mean, thank God. Because that's such a beautiful thing. Absolutely. So when you're 20, you're not supposed to know who you are. You're not supposed to have the meaning. You're not supposed to have purpose. That's the journey. That's the beauty of the journey. That's the beauty of struggles that's and so suffering. True. That's so true. So I don't want any parent to ever be uncomfortable because their child is at war with themselves. Yeah. When you're you know? young, it's very hard to um, embrace that process because you're mm -hmm. always in a hurry. You want to, yeah, why can't I find here. myself? Why can't I already be successful and all that? But, as you know, wiseness comes with age and comes with experience. But then it as does. soon as you have that wiseness in yourself in some form or in some some way, then you realize then the, that, you know, actually this you embrace the process as, as well. And Absolutely. I wonder this. Your products, they're so wonderful. Thank I you. use them, by the way. And you have a tinted moisturizer out now. Congratulations. Well, it's a sunscreen. Sunscreen. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But it's tinted, you said, yes, right? Yes, it's like So that's tinted, amazing. Yeah. I wonder, was this a part of your journey? Like, this, is this something that you grew up thinking as somebody who's in their 20s or this is something you just like it was oh you mean uh, my skincare yeah. brand yeah like developing it was yeah. it something that was always in your mind in your heart is this something you always wanted to do no actually I uh, okay so uh, you know I've graduated from business school mm -hmm. I have been a business consultant for the last 15, you know, 17 years before I even started my own company. I have helped so many, you know, I graduated the business school and I got my master's mm -hmm. in uh, organization, organizational development and wow. um, business management. And so I started working as a consultant in with some firms and then on my own. And then we moved back to Armenia in 2014. Mm -hmm. And I was invited to teach at uh, the Ar uh, American University um, in Armenia. Uh -huh. So that's when my sister told me that she, well, my sister is a biologist. And she told me that she's developing developing formulas that are so fantastic, like these organic skincare formulas that she's developing. And she is thinking of quitting her job that she had as a biologist uh -huh. um, to do this full time. And at that time, I was, you know, thinking, and I always was thinking to Take, bring all my knowledge, business knowledge, and all this experience of all my years of experience in business um, and 
developing something of my own. And then that's when, you know, we took both of our talents, our strengths, yes, and we created Lucine Organics. And she, I've always had, obviously, I'm a you know woman, always had a passion for skincare and yes. self care. But at the time, actually, in fact, I was, I also worked when I was young for Clarence, you know, the skincare company, and I've learned so much. <laughs> and um, yes, and my sister told me, you know, all the skincare that you're using one day, she told me that are synthetic, you know, all these ingredients really damage your skin. You can get, you know, you shouldn't moisturize your skin with something that is going to damage your skin. This is true moisturizer, you know, and then she would start talking about these ingredients. And when I started using her products, the ones that she was just making at home, <laughs> Oh at her lab you know she was working for a lab look at that so it's like self-developed oh absolutely it's not From, even it's like a person literally testing out absolutely That's every phenomenal. single product we have the strongest um science you know science team my my wow. sister is the head of our science team she we take two years to research and develop each formula before it hits the market and we test for a few months on a 30 or sometimes 20 women before it My goodness. yes we do even clinical testing on our own before it hits the market that's why uh, we were so successful so fast we started in armenia in 2000 and i had to you know quit everything i was doing to focus on this and i invested in the company um so Lucina brought her knowledge your sister's of name is Lucina yes i brought oh my, my knowledge of business and um you know uh, human resource management and marketing yeah. and branding and product development everything that i've ever learned and coached other people other companies i brought into my company and we became so big so fast you that did you grew you blew up immediately yes we had to take another you know usually change management i also am a change management uh, agent i don't know it's a specific thing that companies hire you to help them go through certain changes in mm -hmm. the company yeah, whether consulting. yes consul whether yeah it's such a specific thing wh whether it's an outside environmental change or inside structural change cultural change strategic mm -hmm. change anything like that you know you yeah. need a change agent to guide you through the processes sure. so we but that takes time for companies to come to that we became so fast uh, so big so fast that i had to do the change management so fast within our company so basically we had launched our first product and six months later we were ready to take it to the u.s and open our second production in the u.s we had so many orders from the u.s we weren't able to ship it from armenia anymore we were becoming you know we, we, we were having you know i obviously the customers they all wanted to have the product but they were paying these big shipping mm -hmm. fees and that you know, was not serving us very well as our customer loyal, mm -hmm. you know, loyalty um, practice. So, you know, and then that was a big decision mm -hmm. to move to the U.S., open up a product, second production here. And then was everything is a history. Very much. It, it took me days, took us, not just me, our team, uh, days and nights of hard work, 24 hours a day hard work to be able to be, be where we are now and we're still not there yet. We're still growing. And I have actually a wonderful team in the U.S. Uh, my son, Ma Max, he's the head of our operations man management. He is absolutely brilliant. And every operation processes that happens beautifully and in such a wonderful strategic manner, it's because of him. He's 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 it's truly family. wonderful. Okay. Yes, and his girlfriend Mary is our head of my marketing department, and she's everything you see on our Lucy Organics page. She does our, uh, 
you know, for, for, she does all of our content. She does the wow. uh, photography, the videography, does the reels and hires the content creators, um, works with influencer marketing. She does everything that you see on Lucine Organics wow. page. It's her. So it's, it is a family owned it's because powerful. my sister and I do the formulation. We talk about how to create certain products and then we on this side of the business side we develop the strategy on how to hit that to market and how to serve our customers the best way we can and and how we can take really because when I always say when two words mean so much to me skincare truly you have to take care of the skin if mm -hmm. you put something on your skin and it does not add value does not nourish does not you know serve the purpose take takes care of the skin, then that's not really skincare. It's just something that you that you put on your skin hoping. I believe that. So I we I take that. that to our heart and our, you know, we build everything upon that, on mm -hmm. that, having that at, at heart. So now how do you deal with not happy customers? I mean, do you have them? I wonder. Uh, Every uh, absolutely every business has not happy customers, and they actually are our best customers. The worst customers are the customers who are not happy and they leave quietly. Those are the worst customers for your business. You want to admire, you want to love the customers that are unhappy <laughs> and that. tell That's such you good advice. I like they that. are oh yes, they are serving to your company in a way that is the most expensive way. That's to get that service, you would have to pay to a certain group to give you that feedback. Your, your customers mm -hmm. give you that for free. It's powerful. And if you as a wow. CEO can take that and turn that, make that change within your company and turn that into your, make that change and take the feedback and make that change, that's the growth. That's where the growth lies in your company. Wow. We welcome all of our customers who have feedback, who are not happy with certain things. And that's, that's thanks to that, that's, that's thanks genius. to that, we have just upgraded and launched our body butter. We used to have in a different container, mm -hmm. which many of our customers were complaining and some of them got refunded. I'm waiting for mine. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had I known I would bring no, it. No, I, I got a I got a cute little message. So I'm I'm waiting. It was okay. that is that Mary? Yes. By the way? Yes. I should say she, hi to her next yes. time. She's so sweet. She is. She's she's wonderful. You are so lucky and you are so blessed. I'm I'm, I'm so sure blessed. you're grateful all the time. That's like so powerful. But it's like very rare that you see a lot of family working together like that uh it takes it has two parts actually it you ha i i want to i don't want to sound too self-centered but i wanted to say that i am a great professional in this environment for many years i have a i I have great education in business, knowledge, and experience and you have to know the leadership you have to be able to really have that vision, exactly know your strategy, where you're get going, to be able to communicate that to your team and mm -hmm. take your team. Because every person wants to be a part of something bigger and greater than themselves. And if you can keep create that environment, people love that to be a part of it. So yeah. I am just able to separate that from a family. I create the work, the work environment where everyone wants to be a part of it because it's it's learning environment. It's creative environment. People want to contribute their best self to that environment. And when they feel that, then simply the family family gets separated from professional environment really easily when you can create that environment, mm -hmm. work environment. That's how you're able to do that. But also, you know, we're also very close as a family. We just have our wonderful, you know, coffee times and we travel together. I it's see. Just, yeah. I love that. Do you think that along, along the way where you're going to grow, obviously, and continue to, will you stop cooking mm. and showing 
how to cook and all that. Or I mean, what I'm trying to say is, is your focus primarily going to be your skincare? Are we going to stop seeing that? No, that's my passion. And I truly believe that everything is so connected with each other. I truly believe in you know, healthy lifestyle as much as you can Mm -hmm. to be as much as you can. You know, it doesn't have, it's very unhealthy to think all the time you have to eat healthy. Yes, (laughs) true. But you have to to have that mindfulness, you know, I want to call it mindfulness. That's okay. You know, it can be 80% mindful, 20% indulgent, you know, just, but it's very important to be mindful because I always say that the best thing you can give to your kids is also great healthy habits Mm -hmm. like to teach them how to cook healthy meals to be able to recognize healthy life from an unhealthy and stressful life i agree and food is medicine absolutely food matters like sometimes my family be like edit you're doing too much like i'm a very much organic person like i believe in that I shop at farmer's market my meat is from a specific place and i'll get you know, made fun of for that. But I am a strong believer in that. Yes, me that, too. <laughs> you know, your yes, first brain. Too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sure. Your first brain is your gut. It's yes. not this. It's what's inside the stomach. It's your gut. It and also matters. I've, I've, that's so true. I've heard, heard, you know, read somewhere that in, even depression comes from yes. a bad unhealthy gut correct yeah there's a lot of studies and statistics and they're leading um a lot of depressive symptoms anxiety yes um a lot of i mean anxiety is just the umbrella as we call Mm -hmm. it but under anxiety there's ocd there's eating disorders all of that falls under that but absolutely food matters and i am very vaccine aware and vaccine educated so i'm I choose to um, I choose to be more mindful mm-hmm. about what's what's out there, what's not out there, and a lot of these things contribute to mental health. Oh, wow. So when I see somebody promoting really good healthy lifestyle, um, I praise them for that because going back to skin, looking wonderful and having good skin is not only just slathering on organic absolutely products not. and beautiful it's also about internal absolutely. care absolutely absolutely and mental Abso- absolutely absolutely i actually uh, wanted to share something a few months ago i went to sephora and i was just browsing and you know looking and there was just there was this african american woman and she was so beautiful and we we started talking and then um, she's like, oh, how old are you? I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I'm 39. And then I said, how old are you? You know, I'm turning 40 this year. I'm proud of it. Um, but I told, I asked her, I'm like, how old are you? And she's like, I'm 63. And she looked oh, wow. like she was 30. Wow. And I said, there's no way you are 60. You're, you're 30 years old. And she's like, oh, uh, thank you. That's so beautiful. And I said, okay, well, then what's your secret? And she's like, oh, just be a good person. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. She said the 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 secret to youthful looking skin is to being be a, a good, good person. person. I think so. And That's I was like, that is, I got goosebumps. I'm like, I that know. is the most beautiful saying ever. That's you can be, <laughs> I mean, look, you got to be a good person. You got to eat healthy, good energy. So I agree. Absolutely. All of those contribute to beautiful, healthy looking person, a good person. You know, you feel good too. So all Absolutely. of those things matter. Yes, and praying, meditation, yeah. all of that is a part of it. Do you meditate? It. I pray. <laughs> I pray too. I don't have time. I do. Let's be real. I don't have time to meditate because I have yes. two kids and, you know, working. and. But I, I do pray. Me too. And it's very helpful. Very much. It's, right. oh yeah. See, conservative women come together. There's always something about God. So thank you, Sona, thank honestly. You. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation and I'm so honored. You're such a, you have such good energy. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. It it was my true, true, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. I'm so glad to finally meet you. You're so beautiful once again. (laughs) And you are such a beautiful soul. 
the woman was right. <laughs> Just be a good person, and I can now see yeah. why as you're you. so beautiful. As you. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for having me. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. You're the <laughs> sweetest. Oh my God, this was so beautiful. <laughs>